By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today, get ready for some serious jank for some original cardboard man because we're going to look at a match played in the reprint masters and this is actually not part of the tournament report you're probably used to seeing these videos on the tuesday no this is just a match that i wanted to show you because i think the decks are cool this is played in the group stages between plague doctor and jeff and plague doctor is playing with a deck that he's called um let me have a look Degan maggot it's uh, blue it's white and it's black it's, it's pretty cool and he's playing against, against Jeff, like I said, and he's playing with Enchanted Wombats. It's green and it's white. Now, before I go into these decks in the deck tech section, I've got beautiful deck pictures of both of these decks. And they're, like I said, they're quite originals. It might be worth your while. I would just like to point out that if you want to go straight to the games, to the action itself, check out the description below. And there you can find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there and that will take you straight to the action. Now, please remember, all these decks are made with some restrictions because all the cards in these decks had to be made with cards that are printed in 4th edition, Chronicles, or the revised expansion, right? I should say and or the revised because you can make a combination of all those. But they have to be part of one of those three sets. Now, if you want to know more about the rule set, again, check that same description below. There you can find all the ins and outs about the reprint master's rules. Um, as for here, we are going to continue with the deck tech, and I'm going to start with uh, the deck of Jeff. Let's take a look at Enchanted Wombats. And here we see the deck of Jeff Enchanted Wombats, and as you can see, it's white and it's green, and it's built around two creatures that I really like, uh, Fajurn Enchantress and Rabbit Wombat. So Fajurn Enchantress, it's a card uh, from Alpha originally, uh, reprinted and revised in 4th edition, in Unlimited, etc. Um, it's a 2 green and 1 to cast for an O2 creature that allows you to draw a card every time you cast an enchantment, right? So it's kind of like a drawing machine for this deck. And then you've got Rabbit Wombat, which is, which is a pretty cool and unique creature. I think it's the only creature Wombat in the whole game of Magic. Um, but anyway, it's, um, it's a Rabbit Wombat, Creature Wombat. It's um, reprint originally from Legends, reprinted in Chronicles. It's an O1 creature for 2 green and 2. And when you enchant Rabbit Wombat, it gets plus two, plus two for each creature enchantment on it, right? So when you put, for example, the Aspect of Wolf on Rabbit Wombat, it gets the bonus from the Aspect of Wolf, but on top of that, also plus two, plus two extra bonus from the Rabbit Wombat itself. And um, also when you attack with the Rabbit Wombat, you don't have to tap it, so it's got Vigilance. So I guess behind this design process was the idea of, yeah, Rabbit Wombat has these two really good abilities, so we don't want to make it too big. So we're just going to make it an O1. And then, you know, once it eats more and gets more, it grows and grows and grows. Um, obviously, they kind of forgot that, yeah, enchant creatures are not that great. But that only means that I have more and more respect for Jeff actually playing it and giving it a try. And, of course, the cool thing about combining for Journey Enchantress and Rabbit Wombat is... Uh, when you, for example, play your Aspect of Wolf on the Rabbit Wombat, you already draw a card for that enchant creature. So even if your opponent in response kills your Rabbit Wombat and you lose your in enchant creature and your creature, so you lose two cards, your opponent only, only loses one, you still got a card back from the Fijuran Enchanter. So it's still even in that way. So I think it's a great way to combine these two cards. It's also a classical combination, um, I guess, but there's more happening in this deck. And before I go to... The other things that are happening in this deck, I would just like to point out three cards here that I have a little anecdote about, and that's Web. You see the three webs, one green, and it gives this giant spider ability to a creature. We now call it Reach, right? So when you put Web on a creature, let's say Rabbit Wombat, it gets plus O, plus two, plus it can now block creatures with flying. The cool thing is Rabbit Wombat also gets plus two, plus two, because it's an, a creature that you enchant upon him, right? So it basically gets plus two, plus four, and it can block creatures with flying. So that's a lot of value for one green. But I've got pretty bad memories about the, uh, this card because when I just started playing Magic, you know, I had to use my allowance to buy booster packs of Revice. They were about $3 at the time. And, you know, I was re really excited whenever I could buy a booster. And I remember I could do that every two weeks or something. And, you know, I remember getting a booster pack and opening web out of it. And I was really, really disappointed. Even back then, people were disappointed because believe it or not, web is a rare and revised. So, I mean, it is a cool card. I like it, you know, and I can appreciate it now. But back in the day when I opened it, I was just hoping for, you know, Royal Assassin, Shiva Dragon, just a cool creature, you know. I wasn't 
hoping for for Webb. I wasn't even hoping for Dual Lens at the time, but that's a different story. Anyway, that's a little bit of a, a sad anecdote from my part. So, you know, Webb, I, I don't have the best memories of the card Webb. Um, what I would like to point out in this deck is just a really other cool plan that I guess Jeff has, which I think is awesome, is he's playing with Fast Bond and he's playing with Living Lands. Now, Living Lands is is a card that says all your forests or all the forests in play become 1-1 one, one creatures which is pretty cool so it's not like the living plane living lands only animates the forests now um savannas are also forests so there are a lot of forests in this deck so he can build this little forest army fast bond is an enchantment um that has been reprinted in revised it's one green to cast it's uh, i love the art by mark Poole, by the way and it says you can play an additional land you can play extra lands except for your one land drop, but every time you do that, you have to pay one life. So let's say you just have your normal land drop for the turn. When you play your second land, you pay one life. Play your third land, you pay one life again, and so forth, right? So you can basically try to fill your hands with lands, play them out with your fast bond, and then you have a whole army when you also have living lands in play. I guess that's kind of the, the combo here. I think when I'm looking at the rest of the cards, I think a big challenge for Jeff here is going to be to try to fill um, his hand with lands to make this trick work. I guess he's got land text for that. So land text is an enchantment originally from uh, Legends reprinted in 4th edition. It's one white to cast. Another great enchantment for just one mana. It's so much value. Um, just like Fastbond, you know, it's pretty insane. Anyway, and, and that card reads, you can actually look for three basic lands during your upkeep if you have less lands than your opponent. So, I mean, that's pretty sweet. So he can potentially fill his hand with lands, I guess, and then at the right moment in the game, dump all his lands on the table with fast bond, and then have a living plane, and I guess he's got a way to turn because they have summoning sickness, or he can first dump his hand, have all the lands on the table, then next turn, he can play living lands because then they no longer have summoning sickness and he can attack. I mean, it's, 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 it's a plan that, 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 that can work, you know, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> You need, you know, the stars need to be need to be set out right. You know, you need the right momentum to make this work. But you know, Jeff, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate, it. and I really, really hope we're going to see this trick work. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't. Uh, apart from that, I guess we also see a pretty strong hurricane in this deck because he's not playing with any flyers himself. So that's pretty sweet. So this is the deck of Jeff. Now um, let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Plague Doctor. And here we see the deck of Plague Doctor, Deccan Maggot, and I really love this uh, this deck. I'm a big fan. I think it's very flavorful. It's very original, and I'm always into original decks. You know, I don't mind if I don't care if they don't win everything. I think it's cool if you come up with something original. And for me, this is this is pretty original. You know, I really like it. So Deccan Maggot is named after two cards: uh, Deccan Blackblade and Tegel Maggot. Now, Deck and Black Blade is a legendary card from Legends. Makes sense, right? It's one white, two blue, and one black and two to cast for a summon legend, and power and toughness you see two asterisks, and that is because the power and toughness below are equal to the number of lands you control. It's as simple as that. So if you control eight lands, it's an eight eight. If you control four lands, it's a four four. It's really as simple as that, straightforward, and it really um, invites you to brew, you know? In all its simplicity, it invites you to brew, and I mean, look at that art by Richard Kane Ferguson. It's just absolutely stunning. So maybe it's even more interesting to focus on the other part that deck is named after, and that's a card called Tegel Maggot. Now, Tegel Maggot, oh man, this is a complex card. This is a card maybe you've never heard of it. Let me know in the comments below if you've seen it before. It's a card from a Legends reprinted in Chronicles. It's two black and two to cast for an enchantment creature. And I'm just gonna read you the current Oracle text. So not the text on the card, but the current Oracle text to kind of clarify it for you. So the first part of the card is actually pretty straightforward. It reads, at the beginning of the upkeep of Enchanted Creatures Controller, put a minus O minus one counter on that creature. So basically what's happening is a creature gets slowly eaten from the inside, right? It's get, it gets eaten alive and it slowly dies. Okay, that's pretty clear, right? So it's in that sense, a very bad creature removal spell, but it does more. Let's read the second part. When enchanted creature dies, that creature's controller chooses a creature that Tegel Maggot could enchant. If the player does, return Tegel Maggot to the battlefield under your control attached to that creature. Right? So it goes from creature to creature to creature. It keeps hopping to different creatures. If they don't, return Tegel Maggot to the battlefield under your control as a non-aura enchantment. It loses enchant creature and gains 
At the beginning of that player's upkeep, Tegel Maggot deals one damage to that player. So basically what that means is if there are no more creatures on the battlefield, then it turns back into play as an enchantment and it hurts the player one damage per upkeep uh, that controlled the creature that it last enchanted. Right? And this is this is pretty important, I think, in the strategy. So in a way, you could I've been thinking about using this card, for example, with Underworld Dreams and make it an extra pinger for my opponent where I play creatureless, so he's kind of doomed to keep the taggle maggot after all the creatures have died. But it's um yeah, it's a really interesting card, and I think in this deck, um, you know, Plague Doctor has done a lot to kind of make it work. He's playing with um for example, um, Ench Enchantment Alteration, which I think is a really good card in this deck, Enchantment Alteration. Uh, it's one blue to cast for, I believe, an Interrupt uh, from Legends reprinted in Chronicles, and you can move any Enchant creature to any other creature. So that's basically what it does, right? So if you feel like you want to have Taggle Maggot on a different creature, you can just move it. And But the same thing goes, for example, for the two Spirit Links, and also for the Spirit Shackles. Now, Spirit Shackles is another card that you don't see often. Two black to cast for a card from Legends, uh, reprinted in Chronicles, I believe, or was it 4th edition? Uh, anyway, it reads, put a minus O minus 2 counter on target creature every time it becomes tapped. So that is pretty cool, right? So you could even combine this with a card like Twiddle or a card like Ice Manipulator, but these cards are not reprinted, uh, so they're not legal in, the, in this reprint master format. But maybe if you're liking Spirit Shackles, uh, you could, you know, use it in, in a deck with those cards. So really cool. Also see a single anime deck, four power sinks. I see some counter spells. So yeah, you know, it's it really reminds me of, um, of how I sometimes build decks as well, where I feel like I want to do something with a specific card, I guess in this case, Tagle Maggot. And then I put a few cards in that work really well with that card. And then I make sure that I put some other cards around it. And I call that the business side of the deck. So that's kind of like making sure that you don't die. And for me, those business side of the deck are really the two counter spells, the four power sinks, the four dish enchants, the balance. Uh, obviously, he's not playing with sword supply stores because he's got the taggle maggots to do the work. Um, you know, so that's kind of the, the bis more business side of the deck. And you need that, you need those staple cards to kind of keep you in the game to do the crazy stuff. Um, so I really recognize that um, that way of building a deck. So really, really cool Plague Doctor. I'm really looking forward. Um, to see this deck in action. So now that we've looked at both of the decks, we are ready for the actual match. So let's go to the games. Game number one, here we go. And we've got Jeff sitting on the left and Plague Doctor sitting on the right. And we can here see uh, Jeff playing out a Wild Growth on his force. So that's a great start for him. So I'm ramping up. Maybe he can cast an early Fajuran Enchantress. He's, of course, playing with the Fajuran Enchantress deck. And uh, he's got some aspect of Wolves in there. So the playmat is uh, very fitting, Jeff. Very cool playmat. And uh, look at that impressive playmat by uh, by Plague Doctor. You're really the, the player that plays uh, with Daggle Maggot, uh, Plague Doctor. We can see that looking at your playmat. There's a Lantex here, early Lantex by Jeff. It's not going to do much yet. Remember, he can only activate it if his opponent, so Plague Doctor, has more lands than he does. So I wonder if he's actually going to play a land next turn. There we see a Tundra next to a beautiful Underground Sea by uh, by Plague Doctor. And it looks like he's passing turn here. There we see an untap. Are we going to see a Fajuran Enchantress? That's a big question. I think as soon as the Fajuran hits the table, he's good to go. He is playing another force, so he's not choosing to kind of not play lands and try to get that land tax activation. He is playing a force, but that's about it. He's passing turn. There we see a Scrubland. And a pass turn by Plague Doctor as well. So not much happening here in the early stages of the game. Another forest. Okay, here we see the first creature of this match. It's a Lanawer Elves. 1-1 one, one, Mana Dork. And now I wonder, is Plague Doctor going to play a Taggle Maggot? Yes, he is. There's the Taggle Maggot. And this is brutal. This is brutal here for Jeff. Because remember, Taggle Maggot puts a minus O, minus 1 counter on the creature. But then, when the creature dies and you cannot put it on another creature... The controller of the creature gets an enchantment that actually deals one damage to him. And that's exactly what's going to happen now. So untap upkeep before the draw step. So they're kind of doing it in the wrong order here. There should be a minus O, minus one counter on the Lanawer Elves. Exactly. I think he's realizing it now. So the Lanawer Elves is going to die. And instead he's going to get an enchantment that reads during your upkeep, take a damage. So this is really bad news for Jeff. And this is a great start uh, for Plague Doctor. You know, his deck 
is slow. What he wants to do is kind of have a slow start of the game, play Tackle Mac like he did, probably protect it with some counter magic, you know, and, and, and keep the pain going for Jeff. So we see Jeff getting his first damage, going to drop to 19. We see a Jalum Tome from Plague Doctor as well. Jalum Tome, I always call it the little book, two and tap. You can draw a card and then you need to discard a card. And here we see a Strip Mine activation from Jeff on the Tundra. He could have also, you know, depending what's in his hand, he could have also decided to play a Strip Mine on his own forest. That way, activating his Land Tax next turn, but deciding not to. I mean, land tax can really help you get out of a dead end because you get to draw three basic lands and you also get to shuffle your library again. So it can kind of help you try to find the cards that you're looking for. And we see Plague Doctor playing another card. He's got five lands now and it looks like Jeff's got five as well. He's going to draw, take a damage again from the Taggle Maggot. So he's, he's really going to slowly die and he's playing a land again. I'm a little bit surprised that he's playing the lands out. I would expect him to keep the lands in hand trying to activate that land tax. And here we see an end of turn Jalen Tome activation by Plague Doctor. Drawing another card. What is he going to do here? Just passing turn. And uh, I wonder if Jeff's taking the damage or forgetting about the damage. Yeah, he's taking the damage. He's going to go to 17. We see another Jalen Tome activation by Plague Doctor. He's going to put away the enchantment alteration. And... Um, Going to play another Duel the Tundra again that he lost earlier to the Strip passing turn. So there's not really much happening, which is good news for Plague Doctor because it means he's winning. Because look at the life total of Jeff. It's going slow, but it's going down. He's on 16 right now. There we see a Fast Bond. So we do a Fast Bond Land Tax. Let's kind of look at the Land Tax situation here. We see 2, 4, 6 lands on the side of Jeff. We see 2, 4, 6 lands on um, the side of Plague Doctor. So if Plague Doctor is going to play a land now, then next turn Jeff can activate his land tax finally. But we don't see him do that. He's probably counting as well, just passing turn. And what is he going to do? Oh, playing a... Wow. Going to try to get rid of the Taggle Maggot with a Desert Twister. But there is a counter spell from Plague Doctor. Of course, protecting that Taggle Maggot because that's what's going to give him the win, potentially. So he wants to protect it. So that Desert Twister was countered by um, by the Power Sink here, by Plague Doctor. And his deck is, Plague Doctor's deck is really doing what he wants it to do. And I guess he's activating the Jalen Tome so aggressively because he's looking for one of his big beefy creatures. Uh, you know, Chromium, Deacon Blackblade. I mean, if he gets a Chromium on the board, this game is pretty much done for. And he will see a Rabbit Wombat. So it's the O1 creature originally from Legends, reprinted in Chronicles, and every time it gets enchanted by an enchant creature, it actually gets plus two, plus two, and it also has Vigilance, meaning you don't have to tap it when it attacks. And I wonder if Plague Doctor is now going to play another Taggle Maggot on the Rabbit Wombat. I really wonder if he's going to do that. First, he's going to draw a card with Jalum, and he's got to decide what to discard. And I'm still a little bit, like, surprised that Jeff hasn't managed to get a Lantex activation. I think once Lantex gets going, like, it, it kind of feels good, you know? If you've ever played Lantex, you know that feeling. Once you're kind of ahead with that land count, or actually not ahead, but your opponent is ahead, I should say, and you get a Lantex going, kind of, it feels like the whole deck is going better. Anyway, um, it is the turn of Plague Doctor still. Let's see what he's going to do. Looking at his hands, get six cards in hand there. Uh, tapping two black, and oh, okay, he's going to play a Taggle Maggot, another one. I think he's got to tap some more lands, right? Yeah, exactly, because it's four to cast, two black and two. So playing that on Rabbit Wombat, and now this kind of weird situation happens where Rabbit Wombat actually gets plus two, plus two, because it's an enchant creature. Look, Spirit Shackles, I'm a little bit surprised that Spirit Shackles gets put on Rabbit Wombat. The reason I'm surprised is that Spirit Shackles, every time the creature gets tapped, it gets a minus O minus two counter, but the thing is, Rabbit Wombat doesn't tap because when it attacks, it doesn't have to tap. It's got vigilance, right? So I think this is maybe a little mistake from Plague Doctor, or maybe he's got some weird intention. He wants to do it, um, but it means that the Rabbit Wombat is now a four five, and as soon as he passes turn uh, to Jeff, it actually gets minus O minus one and it becomes a four four. So that's why you see it one counter. So it's now a four four. Uh, Jeff's still taking damage from that one Tegel Maggot enchantment. Um, gonna play a web on it. Wow, that means it's gonna turn into a 6-8, actually. 
This is going to get complicated. So it's now a 6-8. He can hit, because it doesn't tap to attack. He can actually hit uh, Plague Doctor here for 6. Dare say Disenchant means he's only going to hit him for 4. But still, that's 4 damage. It's not too bad. Going to drop to 16. I think the biggest problem here for Jeff is if, um, if his Rabbit Wombat dies... Then he gets another one of those enchantments that's going to hurt him. He's got another one of those Tegel Maggots eating away at him. So we see the life total of Plague Doctor finally going down, taking his first damage. And we see Jeff correcting his life as well. He's going to go to 11 passing turn here. And I guess I guess when you're when you're Plague Doctor now, you don't want to play out a creature anymore. You just want to kind of do the Tegel Maggot to do its work. But you also need to find a way not to take too much damage from the Rabbit Wombat. Because the Rabbit Wombat is still a 4-4 at this stage. Next turn is going to be a 4-3, but it still needs 4 damage. Okay, we see some tapping here going on. And okay, there's a recall, so he's going to take some, some cards back. Uh, he's going to take two Disenchants back, it looks like. And I think he tossed in the bin, that's a Spirit Shackle under there. Okay, it's an Animate Debt, so he, he put an Animate Debt Spirit Shackle in the bin. And passing turn here. And there we see another life loss. He's going to drop to 10. He's going to draw a card. He's now got a 4-3 Rabbit Wombat. So he can just deal 4 damage again. Going to put uh, Plague Doctor on 12 here probably. I think what Jeff kind of needs is some more enchant creatures. I can kind of... I feel like his deck is not really working in game 1. He's, he hasn't found uh, a Fajoran Enchantress. And now he's got a Rabbit Wombat. But it looks like he cannot find any enchant creatures to put on it. Like an aspect of wolf would be absolutely fantastic for Jeff here. Even though, you know, if we know Plague Doctor has disenchants. Here, look at this. He's disenchanting his own spirit shackles. Let him, you know, let him disenchant it then. Let him use the disenchants that he has in hand. Uh, it's better than Rabbit Wombat dying. Because now we see Rabbit Wombat dying. And, and that basically means that, um, you know, he's getting uh, two... Tegel Maggot in Shamans, that means two damage a turn. He's already on nine, so he's on a five turn clock right now. And that's not great for him. He's got to find a way to get rid of these enchantments that are hurting him. And we see um, that, that, that graveyard of Plague Doctor getting really full. That's, of course, because of the Jalum Tome. He's activating the Jalum Tome very aggressively. And I think that's a good decision. If you've got a full hand, you've got cards you don't really need. Just discard and go through your deck. Filter your deck. And that's exactly what he's doing. We do see another Lanower Elf here by uh, by Jeff. Does um, Plague Doctor have another Taggle Maggot here to play on the Lanower Elves? That would be absolutely killer. No, it's a Spirit Shackle. Okay, so Spirit Shackle again. You know, every time this creature taps, it gets minus O, minus 2. So that means it's pretty useless. I mean, it's a blocker, I guess. But he's playing against a pretty much creatureless deck. And we see the life total going further and further down for Jeff. He's on five right now. He's got three more turns. Really needs to find a solution here. Okay, playing Aspect of Wolf. That's something, I guess, because now he can attack. Let's see how many forest. <laughs> Aspect of Wolf is this card. We see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Wow, so that means it gets um, um, plus four, plus four, plus eight, plus eight. So it's like a nine, nine. It's got some extra... Uh, uh, toughness, by the way. There we see a disenchant on one of the aspects of wolves. So I believe it's now a 5-6, if I'm not mistaken. A 5-6, and then it gets a spirit shackle, minus O, minus 2 counter. So that means it's a 5-4. It's dealing 5 damage. Oh, this game is going to get close. This game is going to get close. Look at this life total of Plague Doctor. He's on 7. This is quite interesting. This is this weird game that I was hoping for. Let's see what Plague Doctor can do here. I mean, he can take another hit. He's on seven. He's passing turn. We see Jeff going to take double damage from the Tackle Maggot and Champ. He's going to go to three. I mean, I believe it's 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 a five, five three creature. I would just attack again, and it's a five one. But playing another forest that makes a that makes a difference. It's now a six four, I believe. So he can attack, but he cannot kill it yet. I think it's going to be Plague Doctor on one, right? If I'm not mistaken. Or am I mistaken? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, it's plus five, plus five. Yeah. 
So it's six, it's gonna go to one. Okay, there's disenchant. Oh, that's a problem that it dies. Oh, that disenchant. That disenchant is what's saving, um, what's saving Plague Doctor here. And disenchant is exactly what actually Jeff needs to, to stay around, because he's only got one more turn to go. He's on three, he's gonna take two damage next turn from this double tackle maggot enchantment, it's gonna drop to one. This is just such an interesting game. There we see Demonic Tutor, what is he gonna look up? Does he want to finish it in style? Is he going to look up Deacon Blackblade or Chromium? And is he going to play that and kill Jeff with it? That would be very stylish. Look at his uh, deck, by the way. It's very thinned out because of the Jalen Tome. Tapping four, five, six. I think there's a Chromium. Ooh, Deacon Blackblade. So that Deacon's pretty big right now. I think he's going to count it now to see how big it is. Yeah, it's a 9-9. Nine -nine. Wow. Very, very classy, Plague Doctor. I think you're going to now uh, destroy Jeff next turn. There's nothing he really can do. I mean, even a Spirit Link cannot save him because he's going to take the damage first. Oh, look at that. Showing his hand. So, I mean, yeah, but he can play Disenchant on the Enchantment. And then he can play uh, a Balance. Give it one more turn. No, no, because then there's still an enchantment left. Wow, what an interesting first game. It was, in all honesty, at times it was difficult to follow. I'm just going to be honest with you there. Uh, we're going to let both of these players sideboard, and then we'll catch back on, uh, back with them in, uh, in game number two. Game number two, here we go. And I really hope that, Jeff, that you can find some Vajuran Enchantresses, man, because that's pretty much... What if a Jiren Enchantress deck is all about? It doesn't really work if you don't find that key creature. Um, but hey, you're on the play. It's a new game. Game one is, was very interesting. You actually almost won that one. And wow, it's, it's really cool to see the Taggle Maggot in action play, Doctor. It looks like he's taking a, a mulligan, by the way. He did that in game one as well as doing that in game number two also. I guess with his deck, you really need to find specific cards in your hand. Or else just take a mull. And that's what he does now. So putting a card on the bottom, at least he's on the draw, which always, always makes it a bit less uh, impactful to take a mole, you know, because he's going to draw into that card number seven again. There we see Jeff playing a forest passing turn. So no uh, mana dork or no wild growth here for Jeff. Just a slow start. And he's going to have land number three. Maybe he can play a Fajern Enchantress. He does not just passing turn here. So again, it's kind of a slow start. We saw that same thing happening in uh, game number one. Here we see the Jalem Tome. I just think it's a really nice card in Plague Doctor's deck because it kind of helps you to filter through your deck. There we see a forest by Jeff in just a pass turn here. And there is a swamp and a pass as well here from Plague Doctor. He's probably going to use the Jalem on end step. There we see land number five. We see a lot of elves. This could be risky. What if Plague Doctor has another one of a tag of those Taggle Maggots in hand? Ooh, there's a Swift Terror on the Lanawer. I didn't expect that, to be honest. I thought Plague Doctor was going to try to find a Taggle Maggot to enchant on the Lanawer Elves. But uh, it's not helping. So he's drawing a card, he's discarding a card, putting away a Plains, and taking his turn, and passing again. So, I mean, it's really annoying here for Jeff to kind of play against a Jalem to see your opponent constantly having that luxury of of basically drawing a card and discarding a card, just kind of having some card selection going on. We see a land text, by the way, on the side of Jeff. I wonder if he's going to get it to, to activate in this game. Didn't work in game number one. Here we see a Kismet, one white and three to cast. And uh, Kismet is pretty annoying to play against, actually. Uh, it's quite, yeah, it's just, just irritating. Uh, it's an enchantment originally from Legends, I believe. And it says... All your lands, artifacts, and creatures come into play tapped. So that's that's what's happening. So it, it just slows you down as a player. And of course, you can combine it with Meek Stone, with Winter Orb, with Royal Assassin. Like, there are some, some little tricks that you can play it with. It's quite it's actually quite a nice card. You don't see it that often. And here we just see a pass again by Plague Doctor. He's not really doing anything. My guess is his hand is kind of full of enchant creatures or ways to deal with the creatures of his opponent and counter spells. And again, he's using the Jaloom, taking on turn, actually playing an island now. So that means Lantex is activated. But look at that, Jeff. You're forgetting your Lantex, man. You can finally use your Lantex. No. I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's my problem. But I mean, when I can use Lantex, I do it. 
We see a Felden's Cane, by the way, on the side of Jeff. Very cool. It's a card from Antiquities, reprint in Chronicles. You can tap it and sacrifice it, and then you shuffle your graveyard back into your library. It's kind of a way to to help you from uh, from going deck dead. Very cool card, Felden's Cane. You used to see it in a lot of decks back in the day. It doesn't see a lot of play now. And that's quite interesting, actually. I could kind of see it work in this weird... You know, land tax, lance edge deck where you want to have your your lance back in your deck to pick them out again with land tax or something. I don't know. Could be interesting. There we see a jam day tome coming into the play tap because of the kiss mat. And uh, both players kind of like, oh, this is interesting. Oh, what what is this card again? Um, is it called? No, it's not called arena. Um, it's a card from Chronicles. It's the originally from Legends. It's the anti-Legends card. It's kind of like sitting in a bottle of the Legends expansion, and it says all the Legends uh, stay tapped or something. They don't untap. So it's actually it could be useful against Deacon Blackblade. He can only swing with Deacon Blackblade once, and then it remains tapped. That's probably why he put it in there from his sideboard. There we see a Fajern Enchantress. Finally, Jeff, you're playing your Fajern. That is pretty sweet. And uh, by the way, when I'm counting Jeff's lands, he's got one, two, three, four, five, six lands. And Plague Doctor's got seven lands. So I really think that Jeff has forgotten all about that poor land text that's on the side of the table. He, he could have activated it twice or three times already, but hasn't done it. And uh, wow, this is interesting. We see Plague Doctor actually discarding his recall. I wonder what's in his hand. Is he going to play a Taggle Maggot? on the Fijurian Enchantress. A Spirit Shackles. Okay, that's interesting because I don't think you really want to attack with the Fijurian. And also a Taggle Maggot. Okay, that Taggle Maggot makes more sense. I hope for Jeff that he can find an aspect of Wolf or a Web to kind of prolong the life of the Fijurian. So it's first going to get another counter. So it's an O1 one creature right now. So he's got to find some kind of answer to it. And it looks like... Okay, now he's activating the land text. Okay. <laughs> I, think he, I think he saw like, hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I can activate my land text. I think that's a good decision, Jeff. I mean, get that land text going. I mean, the more land you take out of your library as well, the bigger the chance that you might find a disenchant to deal with the Tegel Maggot or just enchantments in general to keep drawing with your Fajuran Enchantress, that's kind of what you want to do. So let's see what he does. Playing a Forest. And playing a Sylvan Library. Okay, drawing a card from Fajuran, right? Yeah, exactly. Go on. So maybe now he's got it going. And this is bad news for Plague Doctor. If he can now find, for example, Rabbit Wombat, Enchanted. Okay, another Fajuran, also good. I mean, look at his hand. It's full of cards. Some basics in there as well, of course, because of that land tax activation. Tapping some more, playing, okay, playing Aspect of Wolf. He can draw two cards. So now his deck is kind of working, doing what it wants to do. And that Aspect of Wolf, I think he's got five forests, so that means it gets um, plus two, plus three. So it's now a two, five creature. It's interesting, by the way, that he played the... Oh, yeah, yeah, That's. I guess it's a good decision because he could have played the Aspect of Wolf on Fajuran Enchantress, the one that's enchanted by the Tagle Maggot. I think that's what I would have done. Um, okay, there's a Spirit Link on that one Fajuran Enchantress. So that kind of takes out his offensive capabilities, and now that Enchantress dies. So the Tagle Maggot actually goes on the other Fajuran Enchantress. Man, this is, I mean, that for your Enchantress, is, it's so full of creatures and, and, I mean, Enchant creatures. It's pretty crazy. I think that Jeff forgot about his Sylvan trigger there. And he plays out his Lanawer Elf. There's a counterspell on the Lanawer because Plague Doctor really wants Jeff to kind of get that Taggle Maggot enchantment. There is another aspect of Wolf. Okay, I just, I cannot keep up, really. Um, two, four, five, seven. So it's going to get plus three, plus four. 
times two, so that's plus six plus eight. So that makes it into a, a six ten or something. And then it's got the minus one mi minus O minus one counter going from the taggle maggots, which is slowly eating away. So that, that counter there, one counter should go up to two actually. There we see another Lanower Elves. But at this point, it's really up to the players to kind of figure out how big the creatures are when the creatures die. So it's really easy to forget triggers. It's, uh, it's pretty complex. And it's interesting because in the modern game of Magic, there was recently this discussion of complexity creep. And what I love about the old school cards is, yes, not all the cards work as well. They're all experimental. Some cards are just weird, like Taggle Maggot. But a lot of, in a lot of board stage, you have cards that are very clear, like a Fajur and Enchantress, and you combine it with other cards, and then you get this complicated board state scenario. And that's kind of what I've always liked with Magic, that one card can be quite straightforward, but then when you combine it with other cards and it becomes this puzzle, it is this very interesting game of you know things happening left, things happening right, and, and, and that's what makes Magic interesting for me, of course, uh, for me at least. And there we see a Disenchant, on um, yeah what was on there anyway was that a spirit link so i think a disenchant on one of the two spirit links there it would be nice if plague doctor could put it away so we have some more clarity of what's happening here thank you and we also see aspect of wolf on Lana, on that one lana rail so that one lana rail is actually pretty big right now and plague doctor has zero blockers there's a spirit link from jeff and i mean he can draw cards right Ooh, swords to plowshares very good decision here very good answer that card's actually removed and I'm wondering, Jeff, um, aren't you forgetting to draw cards from your Fajuran Enchantress, or are you choosing not to? Maybe he's afraid of getting himself deck dead, but he's got the Felden's Cane, so he might as well just draw into the cards. This is just a very complicated game with a lot of triggers. But when all the dust has settled, I guess he just passed turn, and it's up to Plague Doctor now. Playing a C that comes into play tapped. And now let's see what he's going to do. He's got enough mana if he draws into a Chromium or a Deacon Blackblade. But then again, we do see that card there, that Arena card. that, And he's, Jeff is pointing it out now. That is going to keep those creatures tapped. Really nice to see that card uh, in action, by the way. <laughs> Oh, it's really funny. You don't see that card often. So, Plague Doctor a little bit in the tank right now. Trying to think what to do. Passing turn here. Another counter on the Fajuran Enchantress. And now he's looking at his top three cards because of the Sylvan Library. And the Sylvan should be golden in combination with the Fajuran Enchantress. This is what you want to do, right? And also, uh, Lantex Sylvan Library is great because Lantex allows you to shuffle your library again. So if you don't like the cards, you can just choose to shuffle. Um, and I think, I'm not sure the land count though. Okay, there's a Disenchant on Taggle Maggot. That is good news here for Jeff. Disenchant on the Taggle Maggot. Or is he disenchanting the Spirit Link because he wants to attack? You know, those are his options, of course. He can also choose to go more aggro. I mean, he's, he's, he's got a pretty big life total. Plague Doctor, again, a little bit in the tank here, thinking, do I want to uh, counter this one? Okay, so he's targeting the Spirit Link. He's going to go for the offense. I mean, there are two aspects of Wolves on there. I think that creature is huge, absolutely huge. So he's going to attack. Or is that a web? Oh, that's a web on there. It's not an aspect of wolf. Oh, now it makes sense. I think, hey, why is he only taking four damage? But it's a web on there, not another aspect of wolf. Okay. That explains it. Basically, what the web's doing in this scenario is it's buying time. I thought I saw a disenchant there from Plague Doctor. It looks like he's changing his mind. Playing a Tundra. Remember, they come into play tap because of the Kismet. Let's see what else can he do. Into tank still, five cards in hand. Gonna tap a whole lot, play a brain geyser. Okay, wow, yep. 
That's probably a good move. He's going to draw a ton of cards here. Then he'll have to discard as well because he's tapped out completely. I wonder what he looks for. I mean, he's got two big creatures, Chromium and Deacon Blackblade. But because of that Kismet and that Anti-Legends uh, card that says that no legendary cre legend creatures can untap, that combination is kind of making sure that Chromium and Deacon Blackblade are useless now for Plague Doctor. So he first needs to get rid of one or the other on the side of Jeff. And I guess Plague Doctor is now passing. Turn seven cards in hand for Plague Doctor. And uh, I guess he can untap, right? He can untap the Enchantress. Or am I missing something? Going to look at the cards. Going to pick a card. Chose a land. Going to put that into play. Tap two green. Okay, there is another aspect of... So now it is getting really, really big. Now we have the scenario that I talked about. I think I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine forests. So that means it gets um, plus four, plus five, double that. So plus eight, plus ten. And he's dealing ten damage. And now we see... Uh, I guess it's nine damage then. So now we see... Plague Doctor really, really go down in life. He's on eight. There's a lure being placed on the Fijuran Enchantress. This is actually quite a difficult match to commentate with so much going on, but it's very interesting. It looks like Jeff is in the driver's seat right now. Will we see a terror? Okay, we see a disenchant probably on one of the aspects of Wolf. So that's always oh, second disenchant. Okay, I guess uh, I guess Jeff is out of the driver's seat. And uh, yeah, because now the Fijuran Enchantress dies because there were already four... Um, minus O, minus one counters on there. And this card comes into play tapped, and I think it doesn't untap, if I'm not mistaken, because of that anti-legends card. I, I'm, I'm calling it Arena. I know it's not called Arena. Let me know in the comments below what the actual name of the card is. I don't see it that often. I'm talking about the artifact on the side of Jeff next to his Felden's Cane. I do know it's anti-legends, and I think it says no legends can untap. Something like that. Um, he's drawing a card right now, taking a damage from the Taggle Maggot. He's actually, yeah, so taking one damage during upkeep. I mean, it's still not too bad. Okay, there we see regrowth on for Jiren Enchantress. I mean, Jeff is in, in, it's still in a pretty good shape, though, playing Rabbit Wombat as well and playing for Jiren Enchantress. Not quite sure if he's stepping enough lands for that, though. Um, drawing a card from the web. So he's playing a web on the Rabbit Wombat. Yeah, I think he's realizing that now as well. Um... So he's playing a web on the Rabbit Wombat. Rabbit Wombat becomes a a 2-3 plus the web. So it's now a 2-5. And of course, he gets to draw a card from the Fajuran. Spirit linking on there as well. He gets to draw another card. And of course, he can keep drawing cards because of he's got that Felden's Cane. So next turn, he can start attacking with the Rabbit Wombat. That now has 4 power. And Plague Doctor is on 8 at the moment. So very, very interesting games here. But Plague Doctor has got a lot of cards in hand. Yep, there we see a Spirit Link placed probably on a Rabbit Wombat. The thing with Spirit Link, though, is you take a damage first, um, and then you gain the life. Okay, there is a response with a Sword Supplies here is on his own um, for Journey Enchantress to make sure that the Taggle Maggot doesn't enter the game. And there we see a Demonic Tutor. I was probably going to look up an answer for the Rabbit Wombat. That's kind of what I'm expecting here. Or perhaps he just wants to take out um, that artifact that's holding his Deacon Blackblade tapped. Disenchant. Is he going to do that? Yeah, that's what he's going to do. That means next turn he gets to untap the Deacon. And Jeff has a little momentum here. If he can pump the Rabbit Wombat big enough... So he can actually kill uh, Plague Doctor with one swing. Remember, Spirit Link works in the way you first take the damage, then you gain the life. Another Rabbit Wombat. Okay, that's not going to be enough, though. He needs like an as another aspect of Wolf on that Wombat. And he's passing turn. He's not finding it, unfortunately. Passing turn here. Now we see Deacon Blackblade untap, and it's huge, right? What is it, like a 10-10? It is a 10-10. Okay, wow, a 10-10 Deacon Blackblade, but I don't think he's going to attack with it. There is a Soaring. It's kind of on guard duty. 
It's too big of a risk, I feel, for him to attack with a 10-10. Because then he's probably going to throw his one Wombat in front of the bus. And then next turn, if he can find another aspect, he can he can actually win the game. So that, that would be quite risky. He can draw a card first, of course. He's got both books in play. And he is swinging in. I mean, I like your style here, Plague Doctor. Just go for it. I guess Deacon Blackblade's not the kind of guy that you put on guard duty anyway. There we see a lot of tapping to tapping. Another Taggle Maggot. And that means one minus O minus one counter. Doesn't matter much though. I think, if I'm not mistaken, if Jeff can find um, an aspect of Wolf, I'm not sure how many are in his deck still, or some other way to pump the Rabbit One, but he might actually have this game. He's got one opening. I mean, he's got Sylvan. He can do some card selecting. He's actually going to use Felden's Gain. I think that's a very good move because that kind of ups his chances of finding something useful. I think this is a very good move by Jeff. Getting everything back in there. So that means he can he can try finding his Fajur Enchantresses again. He can try finding, in this case, his Aspect of Wolves again. And he gets to shuffle. So again, you know, Felden's Gain, Sylvan... It's quite nice synergy, actually. You don't see it often, but you see it here on Timmy Talk. So let's see what Jeff does. And it looks like Jeff's just passing turn. Ah, that is not good. That is not good. That means Plague Doctor is in the driver's seat here. And attacking with his powerful 10-10. This may, may sound strange, but if I was Jeff, I would just take the damage for now. It looks like he's changing his mind, by the way. First deciding to draw a card, perhaps, so he gets some more information. It's a little bit unclear right now what's going on, but I guess he did decide to just attack. So he's attacking with the 10-10. Jeff has to decide, is he going to block? He's still on 15. Swords to plowshares. Wow. Wow. If, I mean, let's see if Plague Doctor is going to counter. He's counting his lands, possibly for a power sink. If Plague Doctor doesn't counter, he's back on 18, which is not actually that bad for him. I mean, it just means that this game is going to take even longer. But it's not that bad for Plague Doctor. And if he can counter it, it's also good. Because then he keeps the pressure on. I guess if I could counter, I would counter here. He is counting his lands, so I guess he's looking at a possible power sink. He's also playing with some counter spells. We haven't really seen a counter spell from him in game number two, I believe. But he could be mistaken. Going through his graveyard... And uh, no, I don't see a single counter spell in there. Interesting. So, Swords still on the stack. Plague Doctor going through his hand. He can even decide to first, you know, draw a card with the Jalem Tome. That's okay, that's what he's going to do. He can then decide to use his Jam Day Tome to find something else. No, okay, it's dead. It's dead. So, he's going to gain 10 life. So, he's just going to go up to 18. And uh, yeah, I can. I mean, it kind of. It's not that bad for Plague Doctor. It's an understandable move from Jeff, by the way. But it's not that bad. It's like, okay, I'm back on 18. I'm no longer under pressure. And uh, let's try to find my Chromium. So another counter there on the Rabbit Wombat, and of course a point of damage from that other Taggle Maggot. And uh, let's see what Jeff can do here. Playing a Forest, and there is a Disenchant. On that spirit link. Ooh, this is interesting. This is actually quite promising. And Plague Doctor again is thinking, am I going to respond? And he is going to respond with a terror. So a terror on, um, on the rabbit wombat. And here we see what's happening with that uh, Taggle Maggot, it's actually being turned into an enchantment again. So this is really bad news for Jeff. He's going to take two damage a turn. Looks like he's on 10, so he's going to go down uh, to 8 to 6. So he's got five turns to go. And there we see him going down to 8. Gets to look at the top three of his cards. He was so close to winning this game here. Going through the cards, picking one. Doesn't have the luxury to draw extra. Finding a Fajurn Enchantress. Passing turn here. And I think if you look at the whole game, in this game number two, I think the reason that Plague Doctor is winning this is just card advantage. 
which in a way is kind of weird because Jeff had his Fajern Enchantress online, but that Brain Geyser was huge. He's he's had a, a J Jadum Tome for so many turns. He's had a Jadum Tome for so many turns. So there's so much card selection, card drawing happening on the side of Plague Doctor. There we see Chromium 7-7 seven, seven, Elder Dragon coming into play tap because of the Kismet, but it is going to untap and it can fly in and it can finish Jeff. And that is actually pretty, pretty flavorful here, Plague Doctor. I have to give it to you. Game number one, you try to finish him with the Deacon Black Blade, and game number two, you try to do it with Chromium. Let's just see if that's going to work. First, it's going to take two damage. You can look at the top three cards. If you can find um, like a sword or something. And there we see, is that an aspect of Wolf, I believe? He gets to draw a card. It's a forest. And Fajern is attacking. I like your style, Jeff. Go for it. Ah, oh, man, disenchant. Disenchant. It would, play Doctor, just take the damage, man. You're going to kill him anyway next turn. So now he's going to untap with the Chromium. He, he does have to pay upkeep cost, though. Ooh, quickly pays upkeep cost and attacking for seven. And that is game number two. Wow. So that is it. Dagon Maggot, man. Plague Doctor, really cool deck that you brought to the table. Also, Jeff, thank you for showing your matches here on Timmy Talks. Uh, really interesting decks, really interesting brews, and I'm looking forward to play many more tournaments with you guys, man. I always love creative brewers, you know that. Um, if you enjoyed this episode, by the way, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. All those things are free and they really, really help. Another thing that you can do is smash that bell, ring that bell or something. There's a bell button. And then YouTube keeps you up to date whenever I post uh, new content right here on Timmy Talks. Talking about all that stuff, um, if you like what you see and if you want to join the Timmy Talks tournaments, I actually organize them uh, as a thank you for my channel members and patrons. So if you become a patron yourself, you can also join these tournaments. How can you do that? It's quite simple. There's probably a link popping up right now. You can click on there on that info card that will take you straight to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. Um, and yeah, and there you can find out how you can join Timmy Talks. It already starts with just uh, $1 and then you get access to our Discord and you can join every Timmy Talks event, including these tournaments. And last but not least, the last thing I want to mention, your name will be on the end scroll. How cool is that? Talking about the end scroll, let's go and take a look at the fantastic, the amazing, the wonderful channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Somebody can see.